What's up everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I personally use and tell you about everything that I do in preparation for and while I'm out filming a fishing video. Stay tuned. All right guys, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. That's right, you heard it in the intro. In this video, I'm showing you guys every piece of equipment that I personally use and take with me every time I go out to film a fishing video. I'm also gonna tell you guys a little bit about the steps that I take in preparation, what I do while I'm out there on the water. Also, everything that I do once I'm actually back here at the house and getting ready to start editing the footage. So I'm gonna take you guys through all of those steps. I'm gonna show you the equipment. Let's jump right into it. So the way I'm going to approach this topic is I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit where my brain goes and how my mind works when I set out and I start to think about heading out and filming a video. So the lifeblood of the entire operation, the batteries and the memory cards. So it always starts there with me. I'm always thinking batteries and memory cards, constantly charging batteries and transferring data on memory cards. I have a ton of batteries. I personally don't use any external power sources for my GoPros. I still do it old school and just change out the batteries manually. I still get good battery life out of my batteries and I don't really see a problem I'm taking a couple seconds to swap out batteries throughout the day. So that's the way I personally do it. It works for me, but I do have to carry a bunch of batteries with me. So for a full day of fishing, I have a good little stack of batteries. You can see here, some of these are GoPro brand batteries and some of these are non GoPro brand. Nevertheless, if you're not staying plugged into some external power source, you need a lot of batteries. So I make sure I have them on deck at all times. Now I have two different battery chargers and I have the capability to charge five batteries at a time. So with having so many slots and being able to charge multiple batteries at a time, it's pretty easy for me to stay juiced up. I generally don't have a problem as long as I remember when I get home to take my batteries out of the camera and and put them on the chargers. In addition to my batteries, I also have a bunch of memory cards. I have two 64 gigabyte memory cards. I have one 128 gigabyte memory card. I have two 32 gigabyte memory cards and two 16 gigabyte memory cards. So enough memory to get me through a typical eight hour day of fishing. I generally run the 128 gigabyte card all day and I never even have to touch it. And then in my second camera, I will start with a 64 gig and then about halfway through the day, I will switch to the second 64 gig and I rarely ever have to touch my backup 32 or 16 gigabyte cards. I have this nifty little carrying case right here that I use to carry all of my memory cards in. Compact, cheap, found it on Amazon. I'll throw a link down below if I can find it again. And yeah, it works great. All the cards, uh, slide right into the slots and it holds them nice in there, snug, and you can fit a bunch of memory in this little pack. That is what I use to carry my cards. When it comes to my batteries, I just have this little cloth bag wall. I think some tools came in it, <laughs> little wall. Uh, I don't know, I got this little bag and that's where I just take my batteries stow them in there like that. Now, when it comes to the cameras, we talked about the batteries and the cards. Of course, the batteries have to go in something. So let's talk a little bit about the cameras. I personally shoot my fishing videos on the GoPro Hero 4 Silver Edition camera. It shoots 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's all I need. Gets the job done for me. Has external audio. You can find cheap batteries for them, cheap accessories for them. You can find them refurbished for great deals. These cameras do all that I need them to do. I think they capture a good image and I think that they do well for the videos that I make. Even though I've had these cameras for a while, they both still work. They do what I need them to do. They're workhorse cameras. Other than a couple audio hiccups, which we'll talk about, I've never really had any major issues with these cameras. They have the LCD touchscreen on the back and they take great video. They work awesome for what I do. Two GoPro Hero 4s, one on the chest and one on the dash of the boat. The camera that's on the dash is housed in this simple GoPro housing here with the regular GoPro mounts. And then I just have a GoPro mount stuck to the dash of my boat. This slide into and then I run the traditional GoPro chest mount to film all of my first person footage. I have an external GoPro microphone adapter that I've reinforced with some electrical tape around all the points where all the wires might bend or have any added stress put on them. And then I have the wire bundled up here. It just stays uh, kind of snug in between my body and the mount. And then I have the microphone mounted right here on the strap. The microphone is a Sony uh, SCM, CSV, whatever it is, the Sony. It's the Sony stereo microphone that a lot of people use a Sony SCM CS3, whatever it is. And then I just have a simple little windsock over the top there to keep, keep the wind noise down. That is what I put the main GoPro in. One GoPro on the chest, one GoPro on the boat. That's how I roll. Lots of batteries, lots of memory cards. No fancy gadgets, no fancy external power. Just batteries, cards, and cameras. That's kind of how I do it, that's how I roll. All right, now I'm gonna talk quickly about how I carry all this stuff around. 
I use this little Vivitar camera bag right here to carry all of my equipment in. I have the little memory card case. I have this little pouch right here that has an external power pack, just a little external battery pack to power my phone, charge up anything that I might need to charge. If I need to, I can charge GoPro batteries with this. So I just carry that around with me, keep it fully charged all the time. Have that here in the camera bag with me. I have the bag that I keep all my GoPro batteries in that I showed you. I just set that in there like that. So I have all this stuff in there. Then I take my cameras and I put them inside the mount with a fresh battery and a clean memory card. It goes in there just like that. And I'll put that in this, both cameras and all the batteries and everything else in this bag and I'll zip it up. And this will ride with me just like this. So this right here, this little pouch, takes up this much room and it has both my GoPros, both my GoPro housings and mounts, all my batteries, all my memory cards, and external power. I also have in here extra batteries for the main camera, which I haven't talked about yet. The main camera, the camera that I'm shooting on right now, the camera that you're watching footage from, my main rig, my good footage camera, my DSLR camera, best camera, my Canon EOS Rebel T7i, which I'll show you guys a little bit of here. That's what I'm shooting on right now. It's what I use to shoot all my indoor footage, all my footage out there in the garage, all my handheld footage that is shot on the Canon T7i. Does everything that I need to do, shoots really nice quality video. Gotta be honest with you guys, I love this camera. There are other popular vlogger cameras out there and I've had the chance to play around with some of them. For what I do and for how I shoot my style of video making, the Canon T7i, it's money for me. I know there are better cameras out there that are more capable when it comes to frame rate, slow-mo, 4K, things like that. But I feel like for what I do, the Canon T7i is perfect. As always, I'm really interested to know what you guys think about some of this stuff. Mainly GoPro audio. I run just a generic GoPro audio adapter and that Sony microphone. I have problems sometimes, as you guys have heard me talk about in the past, I have intermittent audio issues. Sometimes we'll have some some uh, some problems, man. They, they come and go. I seem to do okay here lately, but I still, every once in a while while I'm editing, will notice some audio interference and I really would like to eliminate that. So if any of you guys out there know a way or know of a good microphone adapter for the GoPro Hero 4 Silver, a good microphone, if any of you guys are getting good audio out of your GoPros and you know how to help me get good audio out of mine, I would love to hear from you guys down there in the comments. I will definitely check out your suggestions. But moving on, we've talked about how to power the cameras, we've talked about the memory that goes in the cameras, we've talked about how I carry the cameras, we've talked about my main camera here. Now, now when it comes to shooting my videos, I put my settings on manual and I set the camera up for whatever lighting conditions I'm shooting in. I run ProTune and I run the flat color profile. So that gives me the best possible image to work with during the editing process. It enables me to do color correction correction and things of that nature in Final Cut, which is the editing program that I use. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So I always make sure that I have the camera set up for the lighting conditions that I'm shooting in. And I always make sure that I have the color profile set to flat. I don't use any, any um, HDR or any high contrast color profiles. It's all pretty much as baseline as I can get it out of the camera. That way all the color that you see is added later during the editing process. So I'm out there. I have my camera set up. I have a fresh battery in the camera. I have a clean memory card loaded up. I put my cameras inside their housings and I affix them to either my body or the boat and at that point that is when I will hopefully already have my rods and everything geared up and ready on the deck of the boat ready to start fishing generally I do all that before I put the cameras on but the last step before I actually throw out a line is I'll, I'll take the cameras out of the bag here and I'll mount them up I'll put one on me I'll put one on the boat I'll press record and then I'll do a couple little tricks to make sure that I can sync up the video footage with the audio in post I use one single track audio from the microphone on my lapel and I use that for all cameras. So at the beginning when I start recording, I'll make sure I have a nice hard <laughs> audio spike on all cameras and then I can use that later on to line up my footage with my audio and take the audio from the one camera, run it to all cameras. It's just a little editing trick that is used and has been used since the beginning of time. The little thing that you see at the beginning, scene, scene seven, take four, clack. That clacker is to cause an audio spike so that they can do that same thing and sync up multiple videos with one line of audio. Anyways, I'm veering off track here, but that's what I do. <laughs> cameras are on me, the cameras are on the boat, I click record, and from that point forward, it's pretty much just fishing. I let the cameras run as long as they can run, and I fish. I focus on putting fish in the boat. At the end of the day, that is what is most important to me. Yes, I love making fishing videos, and video making is a passion of mine, but I'm out there trying to catch 
catch fish. I love fishing and I'm not fishing to make videos. I'm fishing and I just happen to be making videos of it to share with you guys because I enjoy it. So yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not doing this because it's popular on the internet. I'm doing this because I love going out there and putting some fat girls in the boat. So once the cameras are on and once they're rolling, I don't know, I've got good picture and we're rolling and everything's pretty much automated at this point. It just goes until it shuts off. I have my camera set up to record as long as they can possibly record and I just let them run and I fish 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 and then eventually I hear beep, 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 beep. And that tells me that one of these cameras has died. And at that point, no matter which camera it is, chances are the other camera is close to being dead too. I just switch out both batteries, hit record again. <laughs> hit my audio spike and then just keep fishing. And I'll do that all throughout the day as many times as it takes to get all the way through the day generally. I will do two battery changes throughout the day and that's what it'll take. Six total batteries and that's all it'll take. I can fish all day, six plus eight hours on that right there. We can just roll and roll and roll and get it all done, man. Change batteries a couple times. I'm so good at it now, so efficient at it. It takes me maybe a minute or two at most to change those batteries out and then I'm back up and running. I'm back on the deck of the boat fishing. In a tournament situation, that wouldn't be ideal, but I'm not a tournament fisherman. I'm out there trying to enjoy myself, learn more about bass fishing. That is what I do and that is how it's done all the way up until the end of the day <clears throat> now if we happen to catch a fish or if there happens to be an interesting moment happening or if I want to shoot some b-roll or anytime I want to get some nicer footage of anything I will pull out the main camera which I just keep loose inside one of the compartments in my boat uh, I don't carry the camera in a bag or anything I don't even put a lens cap on it I pretty much just renegade roll with the t7i here and that's how we ride we just grab the camera grab the camera bag grab our cooler with our drinks in it a couple other small everyday items like our phone I don't knife, our wallet, our keys, and then we just roll out and we go film fishing videos. And that's pretty much what goes on all the way throughout the day until we get back to the boat ramp. Most of the time, before I even get back, I've generally taken the chest rig off. Maybe the dash camera will still be running. We'll get loaded up and I will grab all that stuff, take it out of the boat, and then just throw it in the truck, bring it all back inside when I get home. And then the last thing I do right when I get home is the last step. It's also the same as the first step. Retrieve all the depleted batteries, take the batteries out of the cameras, take all the memory cards out, bring the batteries to the chargers, hook them up to the chargers, get them going again so that they're ready for the next day and then take all of the footage off of the memory cards and put them onto hard drives. I have multiple hard drives that I use. I have one two terabyte hard drive that I use for editing. I have another two terabyte hard drive that I use for time machine and other random things. And then I have an eight terabyte hard drive that I use for storage. And once the footage is transferred off the cards onto those hard drives, it is at this point that the editing process can now begin. I edit on an iMac computer and I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. I've used the other popular editing programs in the past and Final Cut Pro is the best as far as I'm concerned, especially if you are editing on a Mac computer. I think it's smart to use Final Cut Pro because it's optimized to work with the Mac computers. It's the best one that I've used. I get the best footage, the fastest render times. Final Cut Pro is where it's at. FCP all day, and that's just where it is over here for me. Once I start working on a video, the editing process can typically take anywhere from four hours to a couple days. I work really hard on my videos. I pour my heart into them. Video making is one of my passions. I love learning about making videos, video editing, and the whole entire process that goes into putting together a total video package for presentation to your audience. I just I just enjoy the entire process. It's something that I've always loved doing. I've recorded videos ever since I was a youngster, you know, and it was camcorders and VHS tapes and you had to be kind rewind, you know. That's how we, we were recording back in the day, you know, before YouTube. And I don't know, video making has just always been a part of my life. It's something that I love to do. It's something that I will continue to do. And I thought you guys might be interested in learning more about how I go about making my videos. Many of you guys have asked me for this video in the past and requested for me to show you how I make my videos and what I use to make my videos. So this video is for you, man. If you enjoyed it, please consider clicking that subscribe button. If you really want to help me out, you can click that like button and go down below, interact in the comments. But like I said, guys, I absolutely love making these videos for you. I hope you enjoyed watching them. I hope you enjoyed this one today. If you like these kind of videos that I've been doing here lately where I kind of just sit down and have a chat with you guys, make sure you send that feedback down there in the comments section and click that like button so that I can see. Um, it seemed like you guys really liked the last video that I put up of me out there in the garage chatting away so I thought I would go ahead and make this one while it was raining. I hope you enjoyed it but that's going to do it for today. We'll see you on the next one.